welcome to Footlock with a Difference. We are in a Rolls Royce Phantom 8 and we're down at the Guru Media Day, which we went to last year, something you might remember. God, this is narrow. This is, for anyone who's been to Goodwood, this is the tunnel. I should film this so uh, we can Here. cut this in. Yeah, you've decent going. filming, George. Right. Breathe in. Reminds me of driving down the um, carriages on the Euro Tunnel. Oh, they're horrible. <laughs> We thought we'd do a footlock down here, partly because we haven't done a footlock for ages, so apologies for that. I've got George with me. Say hello, George. Hello, George. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's the old ones that are the best. I'm so glad you did that. Uh, George is normally behind the cameras, uh, doing his very best to make me look good. It's a hard um, job. You. Actually, one of the first films you ever did for Carfection, um, first one, first big films, is the one we did with the Dawn actually wasn't it yeah with the sort of our own version of this mm -hmm. which is the starlight headlining still worth a watch that film um, yes if you haven't seen it so you have been driving all sorts of things today so in a minute or two we'll we'll get to we will get to that um what your thoughts on various cars were yeah which i've got round up of the news obviously things we've been doing if you haven't seen our geneva content then go and have a look at that most of you probably have because the numbers have been great for for those by the time this comes out the BMW M2 competition uh, yeah. film should be out which hopefully you enjoy Charlie and I have been away the last week uh, we've been down in Spain in fact we drove all the way back from Spain in a BMW uh, Z4 uh, so that film will be coming out fairly soon as well that was uh, quite a quite a trip and the most amazing road I don't want to kind of give too much away uh, so I'm not going to tell you where it is or too much about <laughs> it but we'll put a perhaps a sort of taster shot in of, of what it's yeah. like because it was just the footage looks amazing um, extraordinary extraordinary road yeah. where was it in Spain you drove to London in one day uh, yes we drove so in fact we stopped at Zaragoza which is sort of south of the Pyrenees um, sort of in the middle of northern Spain uh, but yeah I drove all the way from there back to uh, well, Gatwick, and then on to home. So I think I did give or take a couple of miles, a thousand miles that day, and I did do all the driving as well because yeah. Charlie was was working in a way in the passenger seat, and um, it was it was no Phantom, but it was surprisingly good for for what. Given you look at it and you think that's a you know it's a roadster, roadster soft top, uh, two mm -hmm. seats. It was remarkable actually how how good it was on a long journey. So. But uh, we did stop. We did a lap of Le Mans um, on the way back. We stopped off, and Charlie had never actually been round the, the sort of the road bits of the circuit that you can drive. So, uh, so that was fun. Anyway, uh, other news. Everyone's talking about at the moment the possible imposition of speed limiters on cars. Yeah. That's the big news from today. Thoughts? It'd be very sad, wouldn't it? Yes, it's. I don't know what those speed limits will be. I mean, obviously, Japan has had um, in the past uh, speed limits um, of it was 112, 115 miles an hour. If it's that sort of speed, to be honest, you're on the road. You wouldn't notice, would you? No, no, unless you live in Germany. I suppose if they're electronically limited. And people are saying that they're going to be able to be disabled. You, know, you have to sort of, you can disable them, but I'm assuming that will, you know, null and void your insurance and of course they're not going to be able to retroactively fit them I wouldn't have thought to you know, all the cars that are currently no, on suppose. the road so not my car but certainly not your MGB <laughs> GT um, should we say a little bit more about what we're in here with the Phantom 8 this is the first first Phantom I've driven actually I'm surprised how tall it, I thought it was the Cullinan to begin with the, <laughs> from the from the front it is very I, I don't tall. think I've seen one close up in a long time, actually. And it's it is so imposing, isn't it? And it's it's everything you hope for, really, from actually the driving position. So they were saying they they are getting a lot of people with standard wheelbase, which is what this is, wanting to to do their own self drive, as they call it, um, just driving to you know me. Uh, and then at the weekends, obviously, they'd sit in the back and have their chauffeur or whatever. So they they're specking them quite interestingly. Yeah, um, sort of. It's got a nice paint job. Front to rear. One. Yes, like satin, satin, satin paint job, isn't it? We have a gold spirit of ecstasy. SOE, as they referred to it to me. Abbreviations, Rolls Royce. They 
have been having a lot more customization and they're seeing things you might not have expected because their age average age of their customers has come down significantly so when BMW took control in 2001 the average age was about 60 and now it's about 40 with some markets being even lower than that which is okay. quite a yeah, I guess that customization comes, it leads on from having your artwork yes. in here. Which I, now a lot of people have taken the mickey out of that and don't see it. I like the idea of that, I, perhaps because I studied art history at university, but I can certainly see some sort of weird appeal. It is spookily quiet in here. It really is. I reckon it's quieter than here in the studio we normally record. Oh, oh seriously, there, so. yeah, we have the air con normally <laughs> humming in the background. <laughs> yes. Now this morning, like all your birthdays come at once. I know. Really? Give us a list of what you've driven. I've driven. I started. So this is my first time driving on track at Goodwood. So. So first off, what do you think of the track then? What? What? I really like it. It feels like. It seems quite simple. I guess when you see the the track layout. Um. But then driving it, you begin to understand that there are some quite precise lines to actually drive it well. There are a lot of fast, sort of semi-blind corners. Uh, so you, you're using the cones and the markers a lot to, to, to judge where you have to turn in and hit the apexes. Things like Magic, where you've got two apexes and it's sort of, yeah, you'll make two corners out of one yeah, long yeah. one and that sort of thing. So. And I was finding instructors from different cars were telling you to take it slightly differently. <laughs> I guess whether they have their preferred line or if the car suits that line better, but yeah. sometimes they say stay in the middle of the circuit for the first part or make sure you clip both apexes. And I think that's one of the reasons you get such good racing around Goodwood uh, so often is because you've got a variety of lines. It's one of the criticisms, isn't it, of the sort of the Tilka circuits we see in F1 in that there's not perhaps the opportunity mm. for, for picking different lines uh, around some of the modern circuits, whereas here it's, it's so fast and flowing that you can take a slightly different line and, and carry speed in a different way through and you, you have to build it up through corners as well so you can sacrifice one to yeah. um, make a difference on another and that sort of thing. I feel like sometimes it's better not to break hard and just to be gentle through it because yeah. then it leads on more naturally to the, exactly. the next. Yeah. But yeah so this was my first time driving there and I've had very limited track driving to be honest. So I started out in the Cayman GTS good start it was a good start it was a small car it wasn't manual and yeah I really enjoyed that and that was very much just taking it steady and trying to to learn the track yeah and what did you hop into next did you because I know you said you drove 992 so I went so, straight into the 992 after and so what was the difference did you feel more confident more nervous in uh, because people obviously 911s come with a certain reputation yeah so that's my first 911 experience um, obviously the 911 was PDK so yeah. it was a lot more relaxing I had more fun in the Cayman I think it just felt very smooth actually I didn't it, there was no drama at all I suppose right. which is what I and um, I think that's one of the things expected. with modern 911s is that they are really quite smooth and yeah and the, the, a lot of the 911 ish traits obviously have been Restrained, I suppose, sort of tamed. Um, no, it just tricky. felt very, very easy. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I went in the new Vantage. Ah. Which was. So that's quite a twin twist, actually, sort of yeah. back to back. So, snap decision. Which would you have? I preferred the Vantage. Yeah. I really did. It felt it felt more lively to me. Yeah. Well, rear front engine, away. rear drive. It's going to feel probably more lively straight away because Nylem's got all the traction. So, and it sounds great as well. Doesn't it, it sounded so much better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the steering felt a, a lot sharper mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. To round it off, it was the Conti GT, oh. which is quite a change. Yeah. Which you've obviously spent time in because we had one yeah. up in Scotland. Yeah. Um, and it, I understand what you mean there about everything being very gentle and smooth and light. So imagine that and then taking up another five notches yeah. and we've got mm -hmm. got this. It's, it's amazing. We had it in Dawn, but just how slow and sort of light the steering is. Not imprecise, actually. Not, it's not like an old car where you sort of, you just feel like there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. But um, it is... Yeah, it's amazingly relaxing because it just puts you in 
a certain frame of mind as soon as you um, pull away. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been a good morning. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I had, um, I had a passenger ride in Ford GT, which I hadn't been in before. I'd sat in one at um, a couple of motor shows, in fact, but never actually been in one, so I went out with Harry Tinknell. Um, in that, uh, hopefully I'll drive one at some point, but that was just three laps. I feel an awful lot about the car. It feels pretty edgy, I'd say, to start with. Uh, you know, it feels like you get to that edge of lateral grip and you're thinking, if that lets go, it's going to be really snappy. And, um, but actually, out of the corners, you know, we had a few just slides on the power, uh, particularly coming onto the Lavent straight. And it, you can feel how progressive it is. Obviously, Harry's an exceptionally good driver. He's got a very delicate right foot and all that. But uh, you can just feel how how smooth and progressive it is, which is uh, intriguing. You, it's so small in there. I mean, I with a helmet on, I'm shrugging down, <laughs> struggling to fit. Sort of, you'd think you must sit so close together. Yeah, yeah, and you really um, you want to be use the harnesses to strap yourself down. Otherwise, you end up in each other's laps, <laughs> basically around uh, around the corners. Finally, I suppose we say what we've been doing this week because I turned up to Goodwood in a new Audi R8, a performance. Performance has replaced plus. Yeah. So that was. What do you think of that? Was that the first R8 you'd been in? Yeah, it was the first R8. I um, it was. I've never been that excited about R8s to be honest. No. Um, and I guess I am a little bit more excited now. But only a little. A little. I I don't know. The performance is very impressive. It is extraordinary. Isn't and it? the noise was incredible. Yeah. But the grip it has in terms of the traction, sort of, and not in a, I don't mean in a dull way, and it is so fast the way it just gets between the corners. Um, and it looked like you were able to have fun in the corners, even though it was. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Drive. Yeah, it's, it certainly is a fun car. You have to push hard. I never really saw the need, particularly for the rear wheel series one, other than a, a sort of if it was going to be. Uh, and, and particularly lightweight version, it's always fun. Obviously, I like the fact they've done it, but the four-wheel drive version is certainly still sufficiently playful. Mm -hmm. but, um, well, there we go. That's a brief footlock, a bit of a roundup of what we've been what we've been up to. Um, thoughts on the Phantom? Would you have one? I think it's too big for me. Too big for you. It's huge. You could live in it. You could. <laughs> I like driving Rolls Royce. It just you suit it's, it. You, it's uh, you look very <laughs> superior. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. I'm used Your to hair's held high. used to looking down on everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much, Trini. Remember to sign up. This is what I have to do, isn't it? Social media. You've got yes. it. Now. There you go. Instagram at Carfection Films. Yeah, I remember that. Twitter. It's just at Carfection. Yeah. I'm at Henry Catchpole. You're George Peck. Um, so please follow all of those uh, for behind the scenes stuff because we are doing more behind the scenes stuff on there as well and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching